Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And today I'm working on the Polaris Sportsman 400. If you see my previous videos, you saw I had issues with the speedometer not lighting up. Uh, also had the fan constantly running with the key off. And uh, what I determined, it was the ECM along with um, a couple other issues with the speedometer. For those of you not familiar where the ECM is, it's this little black box right here. Um, depending what year, you might have the silver box or aluminum one. Mine just happens to have the black one. Now, what Polaris did years ago was they used a sure power ECM. And like I said, some of them are black, some of them might have the aluminum box. And uh, what they did was Polaris combined the voltage regulator, rectifier, other circuit breakers, and the fan control all in one box. Sounded like a good idea at the time, but what ends up happening is, like for me for instance, the fan stays on constantly so there's a, a switch or a circuit breaker in there that's staying closed, leaving the fan on. Um, other issues could be the voltage regulator slash rectifier will not charge your battery. Those go out. That's um, probably a common problem. They do sell aftermarket kits that plug in for your voltage regulator that go right here. And then they hook to the battery. It's actually a pretty simple kit hookup. So I don't have to worry about the voltage regulator because mine actually works. So as you can see on my jump pack, it is actually charging my jump pack. So I know the voltage regulator slash rectifier and the ECM is working. So where does that leave us? Well I know I've got the voltage uh, regulator working and if you guys do decide to do the bypass, it's actually pretty simple. See the three yellow wires right here in this plug? You unplug that. You leave it unplugged, and with the new kit, you just plug it in there with the uh, voltage regulator. I believe RM Stator sells them. Um, or you could uh, hook up your own voltage regulator if you had one laying around from a Honda. Um, you could find one for a Polaris with three wires. Something that would work if you wanted to save money. Um, so my first step is I'm gonna bypass the fan. And what I did was, you can see in here, took the red and black wire that goes up to the ignition switch, comes down here, and orange is hot, brown is ground. I hook that right into the key switch, so now, fan stays on constantly. I don't know if you can hear it running. I did have to replace the fan because, I'm assuming because of what happened, the key stayed on, the fan kept running, the last owner probably didn't know it, burned out the fan. So this is what the fan looked like. I mean, look at it. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. It is really wobbly and loose. I literally had to push it to get it to start working. So yeah, that fan was shot. So this fan probably has more hours on it than the whole ATV itself, because it was running nonstop for couple days. Got a used fan from uh, off of eBay. I could tell you the name of the company but I'm not gonna get paid for it so hook that in directly. Now is this a good idea to do? You might be asking yourself. Is the fan will stay running while the ATV is running. Only on the key switch as soon as you turn the key off the fan will shut off. If you have an old Polaris and you know you want to save some money and you kind of don't care uh, this is a way to bypass the ECM. Um, if you want to do it right, spend the 260 to 300 bucks on an ECM, go ahead and put it in. I'm just showing you guys a little shortcut on uh, what you can do to save some money if you want to keep your wheeler running. If I was going to turn around and sell this, I'd do it right, but this one I'm probably going to hang on to. Now you may be asking yourself, yeah, Titanium Man, that sounds great, but my hot light is still flashing on the speedometer. I bypassed the fan, but that's still flashing. 
Well, let me show you a little shortcut to that. What you do is you grab the uh, wiring harness down from your speedo, you have that all disconnected, and you look for the blue wire with the white stripe on it. All right, so you take the blue and white wire off the harness going up to the speedometer. And watch what happens when I cut it. What do you guys see? Guess what? No more hot flashing light. Boom. Problem solved. So I just learned a lot of this information within the past couple days. Uh, if you see my older video, I actually took a 2005 ATP and how I bypassed the ECM last time was I took the whole wiring harness off, grabbed the wiring harness from, I believe it was the 2004 that didn't have the ECM. It just had the um, CDI box and the voltage regulator and I installed that instead. Just learned a lot of this information from one, a video on RM Stator. And two, one of my subscribers, longtime subscriber, Small Garage Hustle, he actually gave me a little bit of info too on how to bypass this thing and I just put two and two together and figured it out myself. Now down the road, am I going to need a voltage regulator? I probably will. and I'll probably do the bypass and I think that's like 160 bucks versus, you know, the 260 to 300. So for now, I'm just gonna run it like this. But you might be asking yourself, all right, well, why did this happen? Well, my first indication was when the speedometer didn't work. I first checked for power. I had a friend of mine do a continuity test because he's better at electric than I am. And he realized that it wasn't a power issue, it was a ground issue. So I added another ground wire, as you can see right here. Tied that into the ground wire to, uh, going to the speedo and grounded it to the frame. Now the same thing with the ECM. Majority of the time something electronic goes out is because you have bad grounds. So your speedo goes out. Before you ride it too long and mess the whole thing up, check that ground wire. Otherwise, if you keep driving it that way, you're going to wreck your speedo. And guess what? You're spending 260 bucks on a replacement. Same with the ECM. I found out the grounds are bad going up to the speedometer. I also double checked the grounds going to the ECM. I actually think that's why the ECM fried. I also found, uh, if you've seen my previous video, um, one of the wires were actually pinched going to the ECM. I'd uh, fixed that back up and I reinstalled the, the ECM. Yeah, it's unfortunate the way they grounded everything on these because, I don't know, if it was me, I would have added a, a shit ton more of, of grounds. Uh, even on your uh, 4x4, a lot of times if your 4x4 switch isn't working, it's either power going to your switch it's corroded or 90% of the time it's your ground wire going to the 4x4. A lot of times I'll just put a jumper wire on the ground uh, on the wires going to the, the 4x4 and that usually cures my problem. So I'm going to get this thing buttoned back up. Like I said, this is a, it's a cheap bypass on your own unit. Uh, if you wanted to save some money, it's the best way to do it. If you don't mind your fan running all the time. You know, yeah, could you burn out your fan? Yeah, but 35 bucks for a fan, a used one? Yeah, just buy another one and replace it. Or you can do what a lot of guys do and they put a toggle switch on it, which yeah, I think is a bad idea because you'll be uh, riding your four-wheeler and you'll forget to turn the switch on and you blow a head gas. Here you guys go. This is info I learned within the past week. Thanks for uh, some help from a subscriber and a couple YouTube videos. This thing should be ready to fly in about an hour. All right, here you guys go. The light.
All right, there you guys go. Player Sportsman 400, ECM bypass. Runs and drives good, it's keeping cool. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video, and like always, till next time.